In business, more than 1,000 small and medium-sized companies will get additional support to adopt artificial intelligence. That's under a new partnership between tech giant Microsoft and other stat boards, which will see funding provided for SMEs along with customized guidance. Nadira Zaidi tells us more. Barbecued pork slice seller Bi Ching Hyang has been upgrading its back end tech infrastructure to better market to customers. To add flavor to their workflow, it now wants to deploy artificial intelligence to improve supply chain efficiency. We deal with a lot of inventory uh, bit. We get our raw pork stock from inventory or even deliver our product to any customer. So these are some of the existing workflow. Uh, it has been digitalized, I would say it's good, but we are looking further to shorten it so as to fast track it. Maybe today someone order the next half an hour or 15 minutes you can get a product or even shorter. To help firms like them, Microsoft's new initiative aims to support digitally advanced companies to further their foray into Gen AI. The program aims to do three things. Find out exactly how firms can use generative AI in their work, how they can implement such solutions, and then tailoring them to specific cases. For a start, some 200 companies will get one-on-one -on -one guidance to customize and deploy their own AI solutions. As for the bulk of firms that might not be as technologically ready, they can tap on an AI tool embedded in Microsoft's applications like Word, Excel and Outlook. Called Copilot, Enterprise Singapore will subsidise half of its licensing costs for a year. To help enterprise, enterprises embrace AI, it is important that we recognise varying needs across different digital maturity levels. Most companies will require solutions which are easy to deploy and use. With tools such as Copilot, AI is no longer reserved for tech giants with a data infrastructure and talent to support AI models. Instead, all roles and employees within SMEs and MNCs alike can now use AI to improve their respective functions. The Infocom Media Development Authority is also updating its list of subsidised digital solutions to include ones that are more AI-enabled. We are working through the pre-curated solutions to make them more AI-enabled so that SMEs don't have to worry about the technicalities of using AI, but just use the existing solutions, it comes with AI capabilities. We expect uh, to have about 15,000 SMEs benefiting from these uh, AI-enabled solutions over the next two years. On the manpower front, IMDA hopes to train another 18,000 talents to take up spots in Gen AI and cloud computing over the next three years. Singapore employees say that they want to use artificial intelligence at work, but companies are lacking the plans to implement it. And that's according to a report by Microsoft and LinkedIn. It surveyed 31,000 people from 31 countries. Let's take a closer look at what the findings say about AI and the Singapore worker. Well, the report found that 88% of employees who handle data use AI, and they say that it helps save time, boost creativity, and prioritize work. 77% of employers say that they'll hire a less experienced candidate with AI skills over a more experienced candidate who lacked such competencies. Now, while most firms believe that AI can help them stay competitive, 68% of them are concerned about having a proper plan to implement the technology. And this meant that employees end up using AI on their own. 84%, in fact, of workers are bringing their own AI tools to work. And this means that companies are missing out on the benefits of using AI on a larger scale. For every dollar invested in AI, companies are seeing an average of t return of 3.5x. And actually, in Singapore, as you know, SMEs make up 99% of all companies. And Gen AI offers these businesses a remarkable opportunity to enhance productivity, creativity, and operational efficiency, thereby boosting competitiveness on a global stage. And here to share more is Chua Peying. She's APAC head economist at LinkedIn. Uh, Chua Ying, um, the report 
has found that leaders are grappling with AI implementation. In fact, even as four in five employees are actually using AI, 71% of employers in Singapore won't hire, apparently, someone without AI skills. Why is that so? So AI has really infused into a lot of what we do at work. And what, what the data really tells us is that Employers are also keen to adopt AI into many of their work processes. They are keen to hire for skills, for people with AI skills. And with, with this, you know, they, they are also keen to try and figure out how to best upskill their workers with the new AI skills. Okay, uh, so Peying, let's talk about what this means in terms of a mismatch. I mean, what are the implications of that mismatch between implementation and what we're seeing with this rising demand for AI skills, what's the, what kind of impact is that going to have on Singapore's workforce? So what we're seeing from the research is that um, a lot of people, a lot of workers, they are keen to use AI at work and they are keen to try and understand how AI can transform the way in which they work. However, a lot of companies are still trying to figure out how to best incorporate AI into existing business processes and, and their existing strategy. So it's really a tremendous opportunity to reimagine roles, to reimagine how AI can transform your business and augment the efficiency and augment the role of your workers. Right. And I do, I do expect that, you know, as this shift continues, we're going to see a lot more changes in the way people are thinking about skills, a lot more changes in the way we're thinking about retraining their work, our workers and upskilling. And this, this, uh, our report has really shown us that while individual adoption of AI is happening at a large scale, you know, companies still have some way to go. And that's where, really where the opportunity is going to be right now. There are certainly tremendous opportunities uh, paying, but also, you know, AI technology is evolving very quickly as well. Uh, and as a result of that, how realistic is it for employees to actually continuously, we're talking about continuously, well, what does continuously mean year on year, month on month? How much upskilling must they do in order to be certified in AI? Our research and our data tells us that skills are changing extremely fast across the world and in Singapore. Skills have changed. Our projections show us that you know, skills are going to change by up to 68% globally. And this rate is even faster in Singapore at 72%. But one thing that I truly believe in and I'm sure of is the resiliency, the adaptability, and the agility of, of people in learning new skills, in changing according to the situation, and in being bold, being creative. And our data also reflects this. Because we're seeing that a lot of workers have been very keen to learn new AI skills. There's been an over five times increase in year over year, a number of people who are learning AI on our platform, learning AI skills on our platform. And we've also seen a massive increase in members, over 140 times increase in members who are adding AI-related skills to their profiles, such as ChatGPT and Copilot. So I truly believe that you know, we are at we are the cusp of a great moment of change, but it is very realistic to, to embrace this change because we are, as a human race, we are adaptable and we are eager and we are ready to learn. Yeah. So that, uh, you know, the, the chat GPT and the uh, co-pilot that you mentioned from GitHub, uh, those are examples of perhaps of the bring your own AI, uh, something that the report touched upon as well. Can you explain to us what exactly does it entail? I mean, apart from, you know, sort of leveraging on ChatGPT as an example. And is it a boon or a bane for companies if workers are doing this? I'm presuming that it's not regulated because they're just bringing it in and they're using it whenever they need to. But there's always two sides of the coin, right? There's the boon part, which is that it really shows us that workers are eager to use this new technology to enhance the way in which they're working. But on the flip side, it does present some challenges for the company because some of these tools have not been vetted or approved and they may not adhere, have not been vetted or approved by the company and they may not adhere to certain uh, regulations or rules about how the company operates. 
So that does create a certain amount of risk when you think about the privacy issues or potential security risk. And I think another, another factor to think about is the economies of scale. When you're trying to think about leveraging AI and you have different people bringing different tools in, it doesn't have the same amount of impact or the same amount of skill uh, as you would have if the company had a cohesive strategy and was providing the tool for its workers. Right. It needs to be implemented across the board. Peying, thank you very much for that. Uh, Chua Peying there, APAC Head Economist at LinkedIn. Thank you.